like to understand a little bit about data warehouses. We have already seen that data warehouses collect data from a variety of disparate sources. They aggregate data or collect data from different operational data stores. The operational data stores being those data stores that run the business. And we've already seen that the data warehouse forms the basis from which multidimensional databases are created. So the data warehouse in many organizations forms the quote single version of the truth for the organization. It's the repository for all data that has been cleaned and verified and so it forms the basis for a very accurate data source for the entire organization. And the data warehouse then becomes a key player in the different types of BI solutions that exist. We're going to be looking at reporting solutions from a data warehouse directly from multidimensional cubes and we're going to be looking at OLAP applications. In any case, it's necessary for us to understand the structure of the data warehouse so that we know how the data in multidimensional databases is organized and so that we can accurately report information. Information systems for an organization can be divided into two major categories. Operational, that is those systems where the data is collected, those systems that the organization needs to function basic accounting systems, basic inventory systems, and then the analytical systems, which is where we're focusing in this course, where the data is analyzed, the focus of business intelligence, and those systems, while perhaps not necessary for the organization to actually function, are in today's information world necessary for the organization to function well. The data warehouse then is the main repository for these analytic systems and it is, as we've mentioned, the foundation for business intelligence and the types of systems that we will be discussing in this course. A good data warehouse has the following features. It is very easy for the organization to access the information in the data warehouse. It provides that single version of the truth, consistent, accurate information across the organization, across all departments, across all divisions. Um, a good data warehouse is resilient to change. That can often be hard to implement, but there are good structures for data warehouse design. Security, another big issue in today's world, and another thing that requires um, a high degree of attention and detail. So it is also really important, final bullet, to say <coughs> that to find that the business users use the data warehouse, that it's well accepted, that it's trusted. A good technology solution isn't sufficient. It's necessary for the business users to be involved and in the design of the data warehouse and therefore finally to have their acceptance, their acceptance testing, their sign of approval that the data is accurate. The data warehouse structure is what we're look, looking at today and we're going to contrast it with a typical relational database structure that is highly normalized. The data warehouse itself does sit in a relational database world, so it's very much like operational systems in that respect. And some data warehouses can be normalized structures, the structures that are used in operational systems. If this is the case, then generally the data warehouse is used to populate other data marts of a dimensional structure. So we're going to be discussing then the dimensional structure here and that is what we sometimes refer to as a star schema. If you remember the first slide it said reach for the stars. So the structure, the way the tables are organized and the way the relationships are developed among the tables is different here for a data warehouse. And the whole reason for that is so that we can facilitate analysis and reporting rather than data collection. So what is a dimensional structure? First let's consider the normalized structure of a typical operational database. Here's a small example. We're interested in collecting orders for widgets, let's say. And so we design our tables in the following manner. 
we have an order table to collect what we would call the master information for the order, the information that doesn't pertain to each item ordered, but rather pertains to the order as a whole. And then we have the order detail table that contains the information for each item, each widget that might be purchased, the quantity, the unit price, and so on. But we make sure that we don't duplicate customer, customer information or order date on each detail line. We collect that only once in the orders table. And then we have related to our order a customer and that relationship takes place using the customer ID number or code and again we don't repeat the customer's name, the customer's address on each row in the orders table. We simply refer to that information, the name, etc., about the customer using the customer ID. So our operational database, our normalized structure, um, reduces any replication of data, which is of course very good if you're entering data because if we have to change it, we don't want to change it in more than one place. The dimensional structure, however, is not focused on data collection, but rather on analysis of data. And we often organize this um, structure in, in a, what's known as a star schema. In the center of the star, we might have a fact table. We might have facts, measures, numbers about daily sales. This would be where perhaps information from the order and order details table might be collected. And then we have various dimension tables, uh, one for the customer, customer information, one for the product, one for the date, one for the store. This is just an example, but the structure of a fact table central to a number of dimension tables is typical of a star schema and dimensional structure. The fact tables are the primary tables this kind of the center again of the star where numerical performance measures are stored. This might be cost measures, quantity measures, other types of numbers. And a row in a fact table really corresponds to a measure measurement. It might correspond to the sale of one item. It might correspond to um, an inventory reduction. And the fact table generally has many rows. Dimension tables, on the other hand, don't con typically contain numbers per se or measures, but rather they contain the descriptors of the measures. What information is the business, how is the business interested in analyzing that information? There are generally many columns in a dimensional structure and typically possibly not so many rows as in the fact table. This is the customer. Businesses are interested in um, analyzing sales by customer. They're interested in analyzing sales by store. They're interested in analyzing sales by fiscal year. So the dimension is what helps us implement the analytic slicing and dicing. And to some extent it really defines what the end user sees, the end user interface for the data warehouse. It's, uh, the question why the word dimension sometimes comes up. and I would say it's because people tended to visualize these types of problems um, in terms of dimensions, in terms of looking at a cube. Sometimes we call a multidimensional database a cube. So in this particular example, customer values might lie along one dimension, product values along another, and time along another, and facts might be the little intermediate cubes that are formed by the intersection of product, customer, and time values. We'll be looking at examples to make these concepts considerably clearer, and we'll be reviewing and using these concepts throughout the course. So it's not necessary at this point to have a full picture of a star schema data warehouse.